Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for October 13th, 2020. I'm teaching a series entitled Greater is Coming. Greater is Coming. This is part 45. This means that, that you have received thus far, if you've been watching, this is nine full weeks of teaching on the life of David. Nine full weeks of teaching on faith and patience. Now, I've been teaching on faith and patience for months before that. But anyway, nine weeks on David. And I trust that you've been enjoying it and you know that greater is coming for you. So the title of today's message is Honor, Integrity, and Boldness. As a born-again, blood-bought believer, you're supposed to be a man or woman of honor. You're supposed to walk in integrity. And then you know what? This last one, a lot of people, a lot of Christians fail to embrace the boldness that we're supposed to have as a believer. You're not supposed to just bow down. This is, uh, this is where some people think, that just because you're a Christian, you're supposed to be a punk. The devil is a liar. Jesus is the Messiah. There ain't no punk in me. You know, excuse the common vernacular, but no, you, you need to be bold as well. So we're going to see that in the text. First Samuel chapter 24, we're going to cover verses 7 through 22. So I have a lot to cover this morning. Let's get into it. So yesterday we saw that David was in a cave. He had an opportunity. He was hiding in this cave. And then David, I mean, Saul was searching for him with a whole brigade combat team, like 3,000 men. 3,000 elite forces. They come up to the cave and Saul's like, hey man, hold on for a minute. I got to use the bathroom. And so he goes into this cave and, and it just so happened that he went into the cave where David was and, and he starts to relieve himself. You know, he's doing his thing and he is completely vulnerable. He has no sword, no weapon, no guards, no nobody. And, and David's men is like, man, you can kill him, kill him now. And so he's like, oh, he, he crawls up to him. He cuts a piece of his robe off, but he didn't kill him. And so the now Saul is walking out of the cave, and as he's walking out of the cave, David comes up from behind him, and it says, hey, Saul. He was like, what? Huh? He says, my Lord, my king. David turned around. I mean, Saul turned around. I could just, man, I would have paid good money to see the look on Saul's face when he's coming out of the, out of the cave, right? He just did his thing. He comes out, woo, he's walking out, and he turns around, and David is right there. He hears his name, what? And so he turns around. And, and, and David was there. David was so comfortable with divine protection that he actually confronted Saul in front of 3,000 men. The whole brigade combat team was there. And so he runs up to him and he shouts. He says, listen, um, why? This is what David said to the king. Why do you listen to people who are telling you that I'm trying to hurt you? I'm trying to harm you. This very day, you're going to see with your own eyes that this is not true. For the Lord place you in my hands right back there in the cave. You know what you did a few minutes ago. I was there and my men in the cave was telling me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, no, I will never harm the king. That's the Lord's anointed. I'm not going to put my hands on that. Look, my father, he even, even he was his father-in-law, so you still call him a father. He says, look, my father, what I have in my hand. And he pulls out that piece of the robe that he cut off. He says, look, I got this piece of the robe from the hem of your garment. I cut it off and I didn't kill you. I had the opportunity to kill you, but I didn't kill you. And this piece of the, your garment right there, you see the hole on your clothes? This is proof. This is proof that I didn't kill you, even though you are out here hunting to kill me. Now, David was like, dog. And he said that in front of everybody. In that moment, David became a conduit of God's grace and mercy. Grace is what happens when God gives you the good that you don't deserve. Mercy is what happens when God does not give you the bad that you do deserve. David was both. He was grace and mercy that day. He was like, man, I'm going to give you something that you don't deserve. I'm going to withhold what you do deserve. If I gave you what you deserve, you would be dead. And he became a conduit and we can become a conduit of God's grace and mercy in this world. David was standing there with boldness. He had maintained his integrity, even though Saul lost his. Saul lost his integrity along the way, but David did not. David maintained it. And then this is what the next thing he said. I love it. I mean, David has some Brooklyn in him. David stood there and said, now listen, 
in front of everybody, I'm going to tell you this. The Lord is the judge. May the Lord judge between you and me. Perhaps the Lord is going to punish you for what you've been trying to do to me. But I'm never going to harm you. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to put my hands on you. As the old proverb says, for from evil people come evil deeds. See, you're the one out here doing messy stuff. You're the one out here doing evil deeds. So you can be sure that I'm not going to harm you because I'm not one of those people. But who is the king of Israel to, that he's trying to catch me anyway? Should you spend your time? He says, you're a king and you're out here chasing somebody that's like a dead dog or flea. I'm a nobody compared to you. Why are you out here spending your time with 3,000 men trying to chase you, me? Now, now, he says, may the Lord therefore judge which one of us is right. Now, in front of everybody, I'm saying God is my judge. He's going to re- He's going to judge which one of us is right and which one is the guilty one. And then he said this, the Lord is my advocate and he will rescue me from your power. I'm standing right here. Your men are standing right there. I'm not, man, I'm not afraid of you. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody scared of you. I'm telling you right now, I'm not afraid of you. The Lord is my advocate. The Lord is my judge and he's going to judge between you and me. Oh, David is a bad dude. So David made it clear that the Lord was his judge, that the Lord was his personal advocate. David's confidence was in God. David was like, there ain't no punk in me. I'm telling you. So what does this mean to you today, right? I have five things to share with you in this morning. I know this is a good story, but I got five things to share with you in this morning. And and so let me get to these five things. I want you to open up your heart to receive. You ready? Number one, here we go. Dealing with difficult people is part of the package. I, I would, I would, I would love if it, if this were not true, but it's true. Dealing with difficult people is just part part of the process. You are not going to become the man, the woman that God called you to be in a vacuum. It's not like you could just go off into a sabbatical and you'd be like, I'm not going to be around nobody, and God is going to prepare me. No, that's not. God called you to real life to deal with real people, and so His kingdom is supposed to advance in a real world. And so, if you are going to advance God's kingdom in a real world, then you got to deal with people, and some of those people are difficult to deal with. You will have to deal with difficult people. You will have to deal with difficult situations. And if you're not ready for difficult people, if you're not ready for di- difficult situations, then you're not ready to be used of God in a mighty way. See, if you read the end of the book, Revelations eleven and five, the Bible says that the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. Well, how's that going to happen? It's going to happen through us. We have to advance. The, the, the Father expects us to affect with effects and influence the people of this world and the systems of this world. And sometimes the people of this world are difficult people. And, and so simply put, let me just say it this way. If you want to become a man or woman of influence, you have to embrace the grace of God to deal with difficult people and difficult situations because that's part of the process. David went from a teenage nobody to a national hero, to a member of the royal family, to public enemy number one, all in a short span of time. And with all of those changes, God was preparing him. God was actually preparing him for his life's assignment. So my point here is that this, 2020, 2020 has been crazy. I know this is not what you, what you expected. It's not what I expected. But even with all of these changes, people are changing. The situations are changing. The world is changing. And maybe people's attitudes and actions have changed towards you. But that doesn't mean that you have to change towards them. You can embrace the grace and say, you know what? I am going to embrace the grace to be whoever it is that God called call me to be. And if people change towards me, I'm just going to still be me. Be comfortable being you and don't allow anybody to change you. If you live that way, greater is coming for you. Number two, uh, flowing in the same vein, never allow the actions of others to cause you to change who you are. In yesterday's message, I told you that just because somebody drops down, you shouldn't drop down. Michelle Obama said, when they go low, you go high, right? And so as a born again believer, when they go low, you go high. You maintain your integrity. You don't have to drop down. You don't have to be shady just because they're being shady towards you. I know that today I'm talking... Yeah, my Brooklyn is coming out today, but still, I want you to still receive it, all right? Believe me, I have a vocabulary. I can be articulate if I want to, but I'm just saying, I just want to flow today. At the end of the day, if people are being funny towards you, they're being shady towards you, that doesn't mean that you have to drop down to their level. David was like, I'm not going to drop down to your level. He, he, he said, matter of fact, I'm going to still be so much a man of integrity that I will bow down before you, Mr. King that I will respect you, Mr. King, that I am not going to allow what you do towards me to cause me to change what I do towards you. Even after all of that, 
when the two men were face to face, David bowed down. He gave the king the, the respect that he deserved. He says, I'm going to respect you even though you're not respecting me. And then guess what? I'm going to maintain my integrity. And then in tomorrow's passage, I didn't get to it today. Even Saul had to acknowledge that David was the better man. If you maintain your integrity and you don't allow all others to change who you are, at the end of the day, God is the judge. And when it's all said and done, you're, you're going to come out on top. You got it? All right. Number three, flowing in the same vein. God is the judge. God is your judge. When you know that God is the ultimate judge and you believe that God is lording over your life, that means that he's telling you what to do. He's giving you the words. He's performing the work. He is also giving you divine protection because if it's the Lord's will, it's the Lord's bill. When you're living that way, you can know two things for sure. You ready? Two things for sure. Number one, you can be at peace when you know that you've done nothing wrong. And number two, you can, be at, you can know that God will ultimately cause those people that are rising up against you, your enemies, to reap a harvest on the seeds that they're sowing. So David was basically saying, listen, I love it when he said, may the Lord judge between us. I'm going to say what David was saying in today's language. Basically, David was saying like, listen, I'm going to say this in front of everybody. You got it? Let me tell you something, Saul. I haven't done anything wrong to you. I know that I have not done one thing wrong to you. I also know that you're tripping. So I am going to maintain my integrity and I will not change. I know that God is ultimately going to get you back for what you're doing to me. So for now, I'm going to sleep well at night knowing that the issue is not with me. Right? That's the way that we're supposed to live. I can recall several times where, especially when I was in the military, where um, because God graced me to do uh, uh, to kind of create new positions and take the cohort that I was in, in a different direction, um, that, you know, my name wound up being in people's mouths, even sometimes people that didn't even know me, because whenever you, people criticize what they do not understand. Right. So, so since I was doing different things and they didn't understand it, okay, okay I was criticized, but that never really bothered me. Cause at the end of the day, God is the judge, right? So here's my point though. When people came to me and say, hey, such and such is talking about you, such and such is talking about you. In, in many cases, I had the power to get them back. In many cases, I had the power to inf negatively influence their careers if I wanted to, but I never did it. At the end of the day, I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to worry, worry about it. Why? Because I know I haven't done anything wrong. I mean, like the, first of all, their poison can't stop your purpose. So you just pray for them and keep stepping. When you know that God is the judge, you can just be at peace. Now, some of those folks wound up later coming to me and apologizing because they didn't understand. And then some of them, their, their careers didn't go any, anywhere. You know why? Because when, when you're sowing bad seed, you're going to get a bad harvest. So let me just say this real quick about godly character. What I'm talking about right now is, is godly character. When you walk with God and you're living by faith and you're developing patience, you're also developing godly character, right? And so you have to have the character to be able to carry the weight of the anointing associated with your assignment. If you're not going to develop godly character and you're not going to comply with God's ways and you're not going to submit to God's word and you're not going to be led of the Holy Spirit, then yeah, you can watch this series every day, but greater is not coming for you. Just to be clear, don't, don't think that you could just act like the world and be nasty to people and do all these things and violate God's word and his will and his ways and then say greater is coming for me. No, great, greater is not coming for you. What you got to do is change. <laughs> what you got to do is submit God expects you to meditate and medicate on his word day and night. God expects you to be submitted to the Holy Spirit in all things at all times. God expects you to be a man, a woman of integrity and honor and boldness. And if you live that way, then yes, greater is coming for you. You got it? All right, number four. I, only, I got two more. I got to get through this. You ready? Number four. Here we go. If you can maintain your integrity, especially in challenging times, you will develop godly patience in the process. See, being a person of integrity means that you say what you mean, you mean what you say, and you follow through with your actions. Said another way, your audio matches your video, right? So you're not saying one thing and then doing something else. Your audio matches your video. So in this, right now, as a born again believer, you want to be a man or woman of integrity. Your actions, your audio and your video and your actions are either going to prove or disprove whether or not you're a person of integrity. Now, if you develop godly patience, which is what I've been teaching on for months, then, then yeah, you will be a man or woman of integrity. 
you can operate the way that God wants you to operate in this world. And then yes, greater is coming for you. Number five. And finally, I had a lot to cover today. So this is the last point. You ready? I love this point though. You can be humble and bold at the same time. You can be humble and bold at the same time. David went to Saul, said, hey, Saul. Saul turned around. He bowed down. He said, Mr. King, I want to give you the respect that you deserve. Then he stood up and said, now let me tell you something. You can be humble and bold at the same time. He stood right there in front of him. He was talking to the king with 3,000 men, a whole brigade combat team standing behind him. He was like, let me tell you about yourself. I'm going to tell you that God is a judge. He was, you can be humble and you can be bold at the same time. You know that God is the judge. You know that judgment day is coming. You know that the Lord is going to cause you to reap a harvest on every seed that you're sowing and cause your enemies to reap a harvest on every seed that they're sowing. So you can be humble and you can be bold at the same time. This is actually something that's lacking in the body of Christ. Christians need to be bold. Whatever happened to us, believe, listen, I believe what I believe. And let me just say this, and then we'll get to the, to the declaration of faith. You got to know what you believe. It's, it's like everybody else gets to have their beliefs and gets them honored except for Christians. Like today, if I believe that a marriage is between one man and one woman, oh, you're a bigot. No, I'm not a bigot. I'm a Christian. That's what I am. I'm a Christian. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, if you believe that, no, 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 stop. I, you can believe what you believe. I respect that. But I'm going to have my own beliefs. I believe the word of God and I'm not backing down for that. I believe Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I believe there's only one way to the Father, and his name is Jesus. I believe you must be born again. I'm not going to back down from none of this stuff. I love you. I appreciate you. I respect you. But I believe what I believe. You can be humble, and you can be bold at the same time, and the church said amen. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, I thank you for loving me, for blessing me, and for keeping me all the days of my life. I know I will come up against opposition. There will be some people who fight against me because of what you call me to do. But I refuse to allow them to change me. I know whom you have made me to be. And I will be that person every day of my life. I say what I mean. I mean what I say. And I follow up my words with the corresponding action. My video matches my audio. I am a person of integrity. And the trials and challenges I face will help prove it. I am led of you to say what you need said and to do what you need done. If that requires being bold, I shall be bold. If that requires courage, I am very courageous. I don't back down. I don't cave in and I refuse to quit. Greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Click on the subscribe button. Put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Listen, I covered a lot today. I was talking fast because I had a lot to say. God gave me a lot. You might need to watch this message again. You need to get this down in your spirit. Honor, integrity, and boldness. This is the way that we're supposed to live. I, I love you. God loves you more. Do me a favor. If, if this message was a blessing to you and you haven't commented, comment right now. Leave me a comment. I read every comment, in, all the comments in the chat. And then do me a favor. Share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell icon so you'll be notified when we go live. Have an amazing day. Go into this day. Be humble, but also be bold at the same time. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you.